the third time a charm. Let's see if I get anybody back after all this messing around. Sorry, you guys. You just never know what's going to happen with Facebook Live. I'm Kelly Atchison coming to you live from Menasha, Wisconsin. If you are watching this later on YouTube, please remember to share my video. You can do that on YouTube. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Sarah. Um, and remember to share it when you're popping on here, too, on Facebook. Okay, so am I right side up, you guys? <laughs> oh, my Lord. I'm so sorry. Nothing can be more frustrating for me when, than when I have problems with the video. And I'm just going to leave it at that now. We're going to be good. So if you missed me on my personal page, which is where I shouldn't have been, um, I spent the weekend in northern Wisconsin bear hunting. We did get a bear today. And somebody asked if Steve hunts. Yes, Steve is a big hunter. He does not bear hunt with us. Um, he prefers to uh, bear hunt by himself. And um, I hunt in a big group of people with dogs. So it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. Yeah, Lisa, I am right side up now. Thank you. I don't know why that happens. My phone is sitting right here in the stand. I didn't touch it. And then all of a sudden, I'm upside down and sideways and all over the place. So you know what? You just can't get too excited about it because it is what it is. It is a live feed and so many things can go wrong. I have some great projects to share with you guys tonight. Uh, let's see. Let me tell you a few things that happened over the week. Um, I got my office all done. You guys know that. Thank you, Michael. You're so sweet. Hi, Mary. Hi, Ella. I got my office all done, and I couldn't be more happy with it. Like, I just want to be in here all the time. And I feel like such a weight has been lifted off my shoulders because I am organized. Like, I know where things are. I haven't had too much trouble finding things. Like, I put things in different places, and I haven't been like, oh, what did I do with that? Um, I've been finding everything really good, and I can't even tell you how wonderful it feels to be so organized. Um, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend that you just take some time and clean out your stamping room um, because it is a fabulous feeling. Linda is asking if we eat bear, and yes, Linda, bears are part of the pig family, and we do eat them. And I was explaining this before I had to cut off my live and get on here right side up. Um, my mom last fall, um, she made some bear roasts and just big chunks of bear meat. And she used three envelopes in a crock pot. She used Italian seasoning, um, brown gravy mix, and Lipton onion soup mix with a can of beer in a crock pot. I believe that's how she made it. And that bear meat, we were having like seconds and thirds because it was so good. So yes, you do eat bears. There's a lot of meat on them. Thank you, Lisa. I'm plugging in my phone right now because I don't need any more problems tonight, right? <laughs> so yeah, bear is very good and we do eat them. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So what's happening this week? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I heard from one of my demonstrators that was with a group of stamping customers that watched me and they were under the understanding that you had to be watching me for six months before you could win a prize on my Facebook Live. Not true. I think that you guys got that confused with my VIP online club. With my VIP online club, you place a minimum $25 order every month consecutively for six months. And at the end of six months, you get a $30 gift certificate for anything you'd like to order from me. And I see Debbie Fiedler just popped on here. Hi, Debbie. Um, Debbie just cashed in her $30 gift certificate this last week and I placed her order and that's um, on its way to her and she is she said she's going to continue with the online club for another six months which is great because again at the end of that six months she'll get a $30 gift certificate to spend on anything she wants from any of our current catalogs and um, so you do not have to watch me for six months in order to win a prize here on my Facebook live that has nothing to do with it. So yeah, Debbie, yay! Hi, Lori. Yes, my phone is plugged in. Thank you very much for watching out for me. 
Oh, and thank you so much, Charlene. She said that's a good color for you. I do like this color. It's kind of an orangey watermelon color, and I do love it. So thank you very much. It's really hot here in Wisconsin. Um, I've got my ceiling fan on. I've got another fan blowing on me. Hope I don't start sweating while I'm on camera. Um, so Lynn, I think, just said that her husband hunts deer but never hunted bear. Well, bear hunting is quite an adventure. It's always interesting. We actually had a bear cross the road this morning, about a 300-pound bear. And um, there was some other hunting group that came into our territory. And both of us, both hunting groups, saw the bear cross the road. And so what do you do in a situation like that? Well, um, we flipped a coin to see which group was going to get to go um, try to get that bear, and we lost. So we treat another bear and let that one go. It was too small, and then the one that we did get was 261 pounds. So that's a nice size bear. So cool. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Donna. Um, remember to share my video. You can do that right now just by clicking on the share button. Yeah, Heather, it is a lottery here in Wisconsin for bear, and it can take six to seven years. Even somebody today was talking that their friend had a bear permit, and it, they had been applying for 11 years before they finally got it. So, hi, Katie. Hi, Lynn. So, you guys, pop on and tell me where you're coming to me from, if you haven't already. Um, do why yeah Carol we're hunters that's why we do it and you have to keep there has to be crowd control with deer and bears and all the animals so that's why we hunt and um, do we eat them yes absolutely we do not just kill bears and leave them we eat them so yes and um, if you are an animal right activist this is not the place for you so I hope you're not <laughs> Because we hunt. That's what we do. That's what we were brought up doing. And that, that's our sport of choice. Hi, Heather. Hi, Kathy from upstate New York. Welcome. Marge from Olympia, Washington. Leanne from Kansas. So, um, let's see. I have prizes to give out. I have cards to show you guys. I wanted to, um, if you happen to miss my um, Facebook Live last week, I made this fun fold here. Let me see if I can do this. I've got my phone um, backwards, so it's kind of weird. So I made this little fun fold of the Halloween card. And then I also did this first frost bundle with this fun fold. So you can see that it's really cute and fun, or it can be very pretty and elegant, whatever you choose to use with it. So that's really cool. Um, and then I promised you guys that I would show you the first frost display board that I have. So, yeah, we do, Linda, hunt with a gun for bear. We don't bow hunt for bear. That's a, just, it's a tricky thing to do. So, um, anyways, I said that I would share this to you with you. So I'm going to pull my phone out of my stand and I'm going to scan over these cards so that you guys can get a better look at them. I have a bunch of cards using the first frost um, bundle on a display board. So let's see if I can do that without making a mess of things here. So hang tight. And here we go. Yes, I think I can. So, oh, I have to change my mirroring. Hang with me here. I am going to unmirror my phone so that these aren't backwards. Here we go. And I'm going to unplug it, so just hang tight. Get that glare off of there. So I have all these gorgeous, gorgeous First Frost bundle cards. And they are so pretty. Hang on just a second. There we go. Here comes my comments below. Heather, I agree with you. The first frost is gorgeous. And look at how pretty this card is. Oh my gosh. This is that, um, oh, I don't know what they call it, but it's in the mini catalog in Little Reef. So my friend Lori made this card, and she just undid the wreath and used it on her card. Thanks, you guys, for the love. I see those hearts popping up there. Hi, Suzette. Thanks for the update, Heather. Aren't these just so, so pretty? Here's another one that my friend Lori made, and again, she used those wreaths, and they're like an iridescent color, 
right on the front of her card. This is a card made by my friend Dina, and she actually inked up her stamp, and then um, I think she misted the watercolor paper before she stamped on it, and that's how she got this really cool watercolor look. Thank you, Cynthia. Here's some more. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous stamp set, and of course that pearlized paper is amazing. I know a lot of people said last week that they had ordered the paper and hadn't ordered the stamp set, but after seeing the card that I made, they thought they were going to have to have it. <laughs> I certainly understand that. Okay, I am going to put you in my stand here so I can show you some more goodies. Let me get this out of the way. That was pretty... Um, painless transition there wasn't it okay I've got a bunch of things to show you I wanted to mention our next Stampin Up trip um, that we start earning on September no October 1st is to Maui and on the back of our Stampin Success magazine it says whoops I just had something fall over we are going to be staying at the Grand Waela Resort July 7th through the 12th and July 7th is my birthday so I am headed for Hawaii once I earn this trip this year on my birthday in 2020. So that's really cool. But one of the great things that we get as a Stamping Up demonstrator is every quarter we get this beautiful full color magazine that has all kinds of great ideas in it. They do um, interviews with different demonstrators telling you um, how they're running their business and tips and stuff like that. They give us great project ideas. Um, this magazine is one of my favorites. I am, you know, wait with anticipation every quarter to get this. But that's something that you get, whether you are a business builder or a um, discount shopper. Once you buy the kit, you will get this magazine every quarter. And um, mine came. I haven't had time to look at it because I just rolled in tonight at about 4.30 or so and had other priorities like take a shower. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyways, I just wanted to show that to you. And I have already printed out my Maui tracker. And this is going to track what I need to do. And as I... Um, earn the points that it takes to get this trip, I will be crossing this off. I'm going to keep this right on my little cabinet over here so I can keep track of um, how close I am to that trip and what I need to do. Okay, I wanted to go over with you guys um, prize winners from last week. So hang on just a second. Oh, thank you for telling me to plug my phone back in. Bless your heart. You guys... You guys are right on top of me, and I need that, and I love it. So thank you. Okay, we have um, Cynthia Wadasek, and I don't know where Cynthia is from, but she is going to get these red rhinestone basic jewels. These are really nice, perfect for um, Christmas season, right? And um, she got this for leaving a comment on my Facebook Live from last week. So congratulations, Cyn Cynthia. Um, could you please, if you're watching, please send me, private message me your address so that I can get this in the mail to you. And then we have Julie Ledbetter, and Julie is from Clinton Township, Michigan. And I have these all ready to go out in the mail. Um, swirls and curls textured embossing folder. So that's what Julie is going to earn. Or, okay, so let me start over there. Julie won this by sharing the video. So don't forget to share that video because, yes, people really do win, and you do not need to watch for any length of time, any consecutive watches to win prizes. I just want you to know that. And then this last one is for Michelle. McCart of Shula Vista, California. Michelle is getting this trick or tweet stamp set for placing an order. So I have three ways to win. Leave a comment, share the video, place an order. So these will all be going out in the mail tomorrow for our winners and congratulations. Thank you guys. I love it when you guys say congratulations to everybody because that is very good sportsmanship, right? 
I love that. So I got a card in the mail and I wanted to share that with you this week. Um, whoops, let me cover up her address because I really shouldn't be showing that to people. But this is from Debbie Fiedler. And I just loved this card. She's got a little pearl on the inside of this dandelion. And um, I think this is stamped in crumb cake. I think. It may be soft suede, but I love how clean and crisp this card is. And Debbie sent this card along with her $30 free order. So, yay, Debbie. Thank you very much. I love getting cards. Then I wanted to let you guys know that I still have a few of these kits left. Um, this is the Halloween card that I made last week, and anybody placing a $35 or more order um, in my online store is getting one of these kits in the mail. So I'm going to keep giving these out for online orders this week until I run out of them. So you could be the lucky person that gets them. And then I wanted to show you guys the cards. I forgot to show you the cards last week that I made during the week. And I always like to do that. So um, this was a couple weeks ago. This was for a color challenge where I had to use um, blueberry bushel, gray granite, and blackberry bliss. And these are the two cards that I made using the pleasant pheasants. And my uncle, I come from a long line of hunters, you guys. My uncle is a big pheasant hunter. And so this is a real pheasant feather on this card. And I love, love, love. I get so excited when Stampin' Up! comes out with a pheasant stamp set because I always use those feathers. I request from him can you get me a bag of feathers? And he brings me this brown paper bag filled with pheasant feathers. So it's pretty cool, right? This one, I um, stamped it with Versamark and then put white embossing powder on it and sponge just a touch of blue over it to make that pop. And beside the pheasants, um, the pleasant pheasants, is that what it's called? Pleasant pheasants, yes. I use the healing hugs for the greeting, um, the get well card part of it. And it's got a nice greeting that goes on the inside, too. So this is a beautiful, beautiful stamp set. And as you can see, you can make man cards for birthdays, get well, um, anniversaries, any just about any occasion that you need man cards for. So that was cool. And then this is a really cool technique. This is called... Um, I called it faux linen, but I actually think that I made a mistake on that. I think this is faux silk. And I'll tell you, when I, um, I was challenged to make cards using the faux linen technique, and when I looked it up online to, you know, kind of refresh myself on what it was, this tissue paper technique came up, which is really faux silk. I believe. So anyways, whatever it was, it's made with tissue paper. I stamped right on it. Um, a really cool card using the Falling for Leaves bundle. So that's another one in the holiday catalog that I absolutely love. Thank you very much, Cynthia. She said these are awesome masculine cards. I love making masculine cards. So, oh, and Cynthia said I said her name right. So, whew, that's good. <laughs> Okay, um, here's a couple more cards that I made a couple weeks ago. And again, great masculine cards. This is a letterboard messages has these little frames in it. And again, I use that healing hugs for the get well part of this. This is part of the Rooted in Nature. This is the Adriandac chair from season something or another. Who knows what that's called? I can't remember. I can never remember the name of this one. And then, again, the letterboard messages, but awesome masculine cards. I know, I'm kind of getting ready for the men in my life to need get well cards, right? I don't know what's up with that. I just started making get well cards and couldn't stop myself. And then these two cards are from, these are alternate ideas from the paper pumpkin kit from last month. And um, if you guys aren't familiar with paper pumpkin, it's a whole kit. I don't think I have one close to me either. It's a whole kit that comes in the mail each month. And um, there's a lot of great ideas out there, alternate ideas, other than what Stampin' Up! has um, designated you to make with this. So I actually share seven to eight different ideas with my customers every month. So these are the alternate ideas that I shared 
with the kit from last month. So if you're interested in the Paper Pumpkin Kit, just contact me and I will um, give you the link so you can go check out all the information. It's $20 a month. You can prepay for a subscription or you can get it monthly. So it's um, a lot of fun. Oh, and Kim says she got her September Paper Pumpkin and she loves it. Oh, who's correcting me? Oh, somebody told me I was saying Adirondack chairs wrong. Adirondack. 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 Okay, Kathy, thank you. <laughs> I knew that was wrong, but I didn't know what the right way was. So thank you very much. And again, here's some more masculine cards, and they're get well themed. I don't know. I hope I'm not, you know, putting a spell on any of the men in my life, but... This uses the Winter Woods stamp set. You can see here I stamped it very lightly on this square background with those birch trees. I just love this set. Again, some really clean and crisp cards. And this was for a challenge also. And then yesterday, no, not yesterday, Friday night, I was in a blog hop and this was the card that I made for that. And this is uses, uses that tin tile um, dynamic embossing folder with the galvanized metallic paper, which is just so gorgeous. Love, love, love this. This also has the new braided trim on it, which is really cool. Um, I like it's It's nice to use. It lays nice and flat. And the other thing is, is you can kind of spread it out and you can get those edges frayed. It's just some really, really neat trim. So yeah, I love it. Okay, what else do I have going on here? Um, I did our winners. Don't forget to share my video. This is the host code if you are placing an online order. And I think if you just start typing this, it'll pop up and you can click on it. So um, if you're placing an online order, you want to use this host code. That gets you some special perks from me. And I think I am ready. Let me see here. I've just got a couple more things. Da, 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 da. Oh, I've got a new online class coming out next week. And let me pull this back in here. Um, it's with the Rooted in Nature bundle. So this is part of the dyes and the um, twine is part of that bundle. And then this gorgeous paper. So watch for that. That's coming out next Friday. I'll have that available. And an online class has, this one will have eight cards plus a bonus card all using that bundle and each one comes with a video, um, its own video to show you how to make the cards. So those are really fun. You can get the online class free when you order the bundle from me and I have a specific bundle for you to order. So you contact me and I take care of all the details or you can buy the online class from me for $20. And if you're on my team, my team members um, get online classes if they're $20 or less, they get them for free just for being on my team. Um, if you're a new demonstrator on my team or a new discount shopper, once you put in your first demonstrator order, you will get my online classes for free. So that's another great benefit. All right, I think what I'm gonna do here is we are going to make, I've got um, fall cards tonight, of course. Mm, love, love, love them. And I am going to start with this pretty bright card. I know, I think you guys are just going to love it. Look at how bright this is. I love purple and lemon lime twist for Halloween. Um, purple, orange, black, you know, those are the Halloween colors and I absolutely love them. So I have a super quick and easy card to share with you. And then I've got some fall cards that I'll be sharing. Another another card that's fall, too. And we might get three cards done tonight. I hope so, because this one's really quick. So let me bring in, whoops, a piercing mat. Hang tight. And here we go. Oh, this one isn't clean, but that's going to have to be okay for now. I was kind of rushed getting back into town tonight. Make sure that I'm in my screen. What are you guys drinking tonight? I have my anniversary cup. Remember, my husband gave me this gorgeous cup for my anniversary. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I have a little bit of Pepsi left in there. I needed a little sugar surge to keep me, keep me rocking here. I think I'm going to end up crashing early tonight. I've been staying up super, super late. Um, like most of last week, my husband was gone on a golf trip. 
um, from Wednesday on. So I was staying up really, really late. And then sleeping in, of course, you know, because, well, you got to have your sleep. I know some people can't do that. Um, they can't stay up late and then sleep in. But my body tells me I need six and a half to seven hours of sleep a night. So depending on what time I go to sleep, then I wake up six and a half or seven hours later. And it works like a charm. I know, don't hate me for it, okay? <laughs> I know a lot of people have trouble. If they stay up late, they still get up at the same time they usually do. And then they're, you know, sleep deprived. But I don't have that problem. Strawberry wine cooler. Kathy, that sounds delicious. Oh, and Mary's drinking Pepsi too. She is a girl after my own heart. All right, I am going to, did you guys happen to see this? Holy cow, this is our glittered ribbon. And let's see, what size is it? 3 8 inch glittered organdy ribbon, and it is beautiful. I also have a Christmas card made with this. I'll try to put my hands on that and show it to you next time, but um, it is just phenomenally gorgeous. This is the Toil and Trouble Designer Series paper, and I am just going to take a length of this and tape it around back. You can use tear and tape. You can use um, regular tape to do this. You can use mini glue dots. I don't recommend the tape runners to secure the ribbon on the back because I get a lot of swap cards in the mail and they fall apart because people used a tape runner. It just doesn't hold for very long. So I'm gonna put this right on our lemon lime card base. And I forgot to tell you what the size was of this, so hang tight. I've got a little cheat sheet here. Um, lemon Lime is eight and a half by five and a half. I just folded it in half. The Gorgeous Grape layer is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And my Designer Series paper is three and three quarters by five. And then I have a white piece that's four by five and a quarter, and that's for the inside of our card. We're gonna do just a little bit of stamping now. I've got my Happy Halloween. Oh, where's my stamp set? Hang on. Let me bring that in so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using the Cauldron Bubble stamp set, and see, this is that cute little chubby ghost. I love him. I think he is so sweet. We also have matching framelits. And I'm going to stamp my Happy Halloween right here in the middle. Oh, that looks pretty darn good. And then I'm going to take my chubby little ghost and just add one of him right there. Just to add a little interest to the inside. You can do whatever you want on the inside, but I always recommend you do something. Because remember what I say, the party should not end when you open the card, right? So I can get this straight in here. That looks better. Okay, so... Now, we are going to take a little piece of the glittered organdy ribbon, and we're going to just tie it on here. And for those of you that have a hard time with bows, this is your bow. You don't have to tie a bow like you're tying your shoes. You can just tie on a little length of ribbon, and it looks like a bow. And voila, perfect, right? Okay. Then I've got a scrap of lemon lime, and I'm going to just stamp out three of my little chubby ghosts. <laughs> I think he's so funny. And then we've got a framelit here that will cut my little ghosts out. And through the magic of TV, so you don't have to sit and wait for me to do this, I've already got my ghosts cut out for you. So you wouldn't have to wait around. Yeah, I know. I'm nice like that. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Yeah, Casper, the friendly ghost. That's right. Thank you, Deborah. Okay. Now, I already die cut with our um, Stitch Shapes framelits a circle. And then our layering circles, I've got a lemon lime twist scallop that's going to just peek out from underneath this layer. And we are going to use the... Look it, I don't have that stamp out here. Hang on, I must have it in the other one. I need the trick-or-treat stamp. Oh, I think this is it. Yep, here it is. Okay, I'm going to stamp in Memento Black Ink Trick-or-Treat right in the middle of my circle. And let me get my chamois out here. If you guys don't have one of these or you're new to me, this is our chamois. I sell it in my online store, and it is the best stamp cleaner ever. I'm just even going to... 
I'm not even gonna mess around. It's the best. Um, and here we go with the gorgeous grape. Now you have to remember when you're stamping with these tiny little intricate stamps, you don't want to push too hard because when you push really hard in the ink, you get ink everywhere, number one. And when you push too hard um, on your on your layer, it squishes it and looks crummy like that. See how nice and detailed that is? Just take some time to practice a little bit so that you're not squishing the image and making a mess out of it. It's it, it looks much better when you don't do that. Did I clean that? I did, but I didn't clean this one. Oh look, I lost my stamp off this one. Okay, and then I told you guys this card was super simple, right? We are going to, now I could pop these up on dimensionals, but I'm gonna pop up this whole layer, so I don't want it to be too tall that it you know, doesn't fit in our envelope well. Aren't they cute? Yeah, I don't know why, but I just thought, I wanna make colored ghosts, and this was perfect. I just put my little ghosts on there. I'm going to glue this on my scalloped layer, and now I'm gonna come in with dimensionals. Let me move all these cards out of my way. That's kind of... Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> Stamping is hard work tonight. No, it's not hard work. I'm having fun, but I am starting to glisten a little bit because it's really warm here. My husband was out mowing the lawn when I got home, and he was getting just eaten alive by mosquitoes. And look at that. Whoops, that's not straight. Let's get those words straight. What do you guys think? Isn't it cute? I love the little um, ghost paper in the background. Again, that Halloween paper is just so stinking adorable. Who wouldn't want this? I Nobody, right? Yeah, everybody's going to want this card. Thank you guys for the love. All right, let me set that aside. I'm going to bring in my next project here. I think I'm going to leave the stamp set up here for, um, I have one more Halloween card that I'm going to do in just a bit here. Get all my mess out of the way. All right. Whoops, that's not closed. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my fall card. You guys are going to love this. Um, this was made by my friend and downline. She's part of my team, Sarah Simon. It is a gorgeous use of the Falling for Leaves stamp set and also the Buffalo check background. So I asked Sarah if I could share this in a video and she said, um, yeah, you can always share my stuff. So that was just so sweet and I was very grateful. Let me get out all my supplies here. Okay. So here comes our layers of cardstock. You know what, I just put a card in front of my comments on my computer, so let me get that on there. Thanks you guys so much. Okay, and then here comes all of our layers. And I'll tell you what's going on here in just a second. Uh, there we go. And here's another layer. So. We have a Mossy Meadow card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half. And I'm just folding that in half and we're going to burnish it with our bone folder. And then I have a piece of Cajun Craze. Oh, I've got two pieces of Cajun Craze here. Both of these pieces are four by five and a quarter. I have a piece of crushed curry and that is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. I have a piece of very vanilla that is three and three quarters by five, a scrap of Cajun craze, another layer of Cajun craze that is four by two and three quarters, very vanilla that is two and five eighths by three and seven eighths and you're going oh my god Kelly I can never I can't even write all this down don't worry this will all be on my blog um, on Tuesday I post pictures of everything I make in my Facebook live on Tuesday my blog address is right here www.astampabug.com on Tuesday morning at 6.30 Central Time, all of these cards will be posted on there with all the dimensions and ordering links if you'd like to order any of the supplies. Okay, first of all, 
we are going to stamp up the inside of our card on that three and three quarters by five inch very vanilla piece. And I've got Cajun Craze ink here. And hang on, because I have to get out a big block. Um, somebody borrowed, whoops. Somebody borrowed my blocks for the weekend. One of my demonstrators that was having a big event. So I couldn't, I had to let her have my blocks. So I didn't have these mounted yet. There we go. So again, this is the Falling for Leaves bundle. Um, there is a set of stamps and also the framelits that go with it that is just gorgeous. And I, of course, I'm a sucker for leaf sets anyways. So Cajun Craze ink, I am going to stamp up my leaf. And then, oh, let's see. We need the harvest of thanks. And let me see. If, oh, here it is right here. Like I said, I would have, I, I couldn't have these on blocks yet. So I gave all my blocks to, to somebody. And now that somebody's going, oh, look, I, no, it's fine. Not a big deal. <laughs> right? You guys can wait for me to put some rubber on some blocks. Okay, this is Mossy Meadow, and this is the stamp that says Harvest of Thanks. And I'm just going to come right in here and stamp that. And isn't that, I love the font. It's very pretty. And we are going to put our inside of our card together. So you're going to take the vanilla and put it on one of those Cajun Craze layers. And then, let me move these ink pads out of the way. I know you guys, that's making you guys nervous, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, Carol, I'm sorry you lost me. I'm glad you're back. And then inside. Now, look at how nice that looks with that layer of Cajun Craze in there. I could have just put very vanilla, but Sarah, of course, she did a super job making that card for me, and um, I love that extra layer inside. All right. Then we've got this layer of Cajun Craze, and I'm just going to add that right to the front of our Mossy Meadow card base and then I'm going to take the smaller vanilla layer and this was um, three and seven eighths by two and five eighths and we're going to use the mossy meadow ink with this beautiful saying that says thinking of you with a grateful heart you want to make sure you're stamping that off to the left side of this layer okay and that's crooked so yay <laughs> why they give us two sides to every piece of cardstock. And then we're going to take the dies in here. We've got this die and this die. It's like, oh, what do you do with that? Well, it is originally intended to cut off the edge of this, right? So you can cut off the edge of that one if you want to or not. And what Sarah did was she took this with a piece of our gold glimmer paper and she cut it. And I'm gonna show you in just a second what she did with that because this card is so cool. Then we're gonna take this outline stamp and we're gonna cut out a leaf out of our Cajun craze. And let me show you what happens when we do all of that because of course I have it done. I don't want you guys waiting for me to do stuff like that. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? I just love, love, love this look. So that's gonna go on our card. This is gonna go on our card. And then I've got my Big Shot die brush here. And I've already die cut this onto the gold glimmer paper. And now, if you leave the die right on there, you can be really aggressive when you're using this die brush, right? Because you're not gonna harm your paper underneath. And pick it up, see if you can get all those little bits out of there so you don't have to mess around with it too much because I'm all about not messing around too much. Now I'm gonna pull this out of here. Comes out really nice. Oh, and look at there's nothing left in this die. And don't you love that? Oh, I love, love, love that. Okay, so we're gonna pop this out just a little bit. We've got a few things that didn't come all the way out. So let's just see if this will work. Yep, 
there's a few more little pieces coming out of there. Let me set this aside. Now we're gonna bring this in and layer it right on top of this rust Cajun craze leaf. So let me just add a little bit of glue. I'm not gonna get too crazy with the glue. The leaf isn't going any place. We're not, you know, it's not gonna have to hold anything in. A few little dots here and there. And here we go. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? I love, love, love this. Sarah did an amazing job. Let me put just a little bit of glue on there. I must have missed that corner. There we go. Okay, are you ready to see all the beautifulness of this? Is that a word? I like to make up my own words. <laughs> Here comes the leaf. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't glue that on yet. Um, hang tight with that. I'm gonna do this part though. We are going to glue the very vanilla layer to the Cajun craze. Get a nice thin little border around this. There we go. And then this is gonna go at the bottom. It just looks so, so pretty. So I'm gonna use a little bit of glue here, or I mean tape. I'm just gonna put some tape on here like this. This is how I like to do this. It, it's just something that makes it easier for me. So I've got a couple pieces of tape on there. And now I'm gonna bring this in and I can see from the front that I'm getting it the same width. Does that make sense? I just want a little bit to peek out here. And I'm gonna push it down and it sticks to the back there Got a little tiny piece I need to cut off right here. There we go. Okay, we're gonna set this aside for just a second while we do the buffalo check background. And when I first saw this in the catalog, I was like, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, people are doing some amazing things with this stamp, like really cool stuff. You can take a ruler and after you stamp it, you can draw lines and make it, you know, plaid in other colors with your markers. Just a lot of really cool stuff. All right, I need Cajun, hang on while this squeaks at me a little bit. Um, I need Cajun Craze ink, and this is great because I am not finding it. Hmm, hang tight. Here's some Cajun Craze. Oh, I mean crushed curry, not Cajun Craze. Okay, I'm going to ink up this Buffalo check with crushed curry ink, and then we are going to use crushed curry cardstock. So we're doing a tone on tone. You kind of want to get this straight on here. It'll look kind of goofy. I've got just a plain piece of printer paper and a nice flat hand on here, and that's how I keep the ink off my hands. You should always leave these big background stamps laying on your surface and bring your cardstock to them. That's how they work best, and look at that. Isn't that cool looking? I love this. Okay, now here comes all of our layers. We're gonna add this to the center of this. And the reason why I wanted to wait on that leaf is so that I know it doesn't go off the edge of my card because we wanna get our card into an envelope, right? Yeah, that's kind of a I caught myself at the last minute before I made a grave error. Okay, there we go. And then here comes our leaf. Oh yeah, it's gonna fit in here just perfect. We have a couple more little things that Sarah did to her card and she always goes that extra step with her creations. And we've got these metallic pearls. I'm just going to take a gold metallic pearl. You love all the layers. Thank you, Charlene. I'm a big layer person too. I have to tell you that layer, 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 because you can take a card from eh, to fabulous with a few layers. I know that's really hard to see, but that's got a gold pearl on there and it's just that perfect little accent. And then Sarah used the Festive Farmhouse Cotton Twine, and you get vanilla, I think this is cherry cobbler or red, I don't know what the colors are, and then Mossy Meadow. And I am just going to 
take and tie a bow. You can just tie a bow the old fashioned way. I have my bow jig here and I'm gonna use it because it's easy. I have a video on YouTube showing exactly how to use this and my friend Denise's husband makes these bow jigs. So if you'd like to get your hands on one, um, pop me an email. My email address is kelly at a stamp above.com. So please make sure that you email me because I have to email your address to Denise. And if you don't email me, then I don't have your email address. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, mini glue dot here, you guys. And I like to just kind of scrunch those up a little bit when I'm using them with twine because you don't want the glue dot to stick out from behind your twine. <gasps> Look at that. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, and Linda says her husband made her a bow tying jig. Yay! Yeah, they're really easy to make, you guys. You can certainly make your own. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for letting me share this with all of um, our watchers, our, my, my customers or viewers. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you for letting me um, share this with all my viewers tonight because it is so stunning. I love, love, love it. Okay. You guys ready for the next one? So I'm kind of excited to show you this um, next card because I'm using shrink plastic and shrink plastic is so much fun when you combine it with stamping. So hang tight while I get my little mess cleaned up here. Let me just throw some of the stuff off my, I'll clean this up later type of deal. Okay, do I have any questions, you guys, that I have missed? Because, you know, I get making cards and then I miss what you're saying, and I apologize for that, but <laughs> in my defense, I'm only one person. Sometimes it's kind of hard to monitor everything all at the same time. Okay, I think we're cleaned up here enough. Oh, you guys, the pick a, pick a, or um, what is this called? Take a pick tool. I was gonna use that to pick up that um, pearl, but I'm so used to using my pokey tool that I kind of forgot. That's what the spatula end is great for, is picking up rhinestones and pearls. It works fabulously. You'll see me using this a lot more as I get used to it, because I just kind of forgot. All right, next. I am bringing in some shrink plastic and some watercolor pencils and then I've got too many ink pads here I've got stays on and memento and then we're going to use our bat punch our two inch circle our starburst circle some stampin blends are you guys going oh my gosh so many things um, basic gray ink pad and again our um, cauldron bubble stamp set all right, where did that, oh, here it is. Where's my stamp set? It's so cute, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna just set that up there. And here we go with our layers. So, I've got my ribbons already cut. I've got a piece of shrink plastic here. A scrap of whisper white. I've got a piece of our Toil and Trouble Designer Series paper. Let me see where's my dimensions. This one is one and a quarter by three and seven eighths. And I've got a piece of basic black and this is four by five and a quarter. Get that in here. A piece of our cat designer series paper. This is also the Toil and Trouble designer series paper. And this piece is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I'm bringing in our black foil. This one is a scrap. This one is one and a half by three and seven eighths. Okay, so let's get our card kind of put together and then I'll show you what I did with the shrink plastic. Oh, I'm off camera. Thank you for telling me that. I saw that, thank you so much. Um, so we've got all these layers and I'm gonna touch on those in just a minute. I'm sorry about that. You only have so much room where this camera is. Okay, so 
so this is gorgeous grape four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half and then we've got a piece of basic black that is four by five and a quarter and we are just going to put on the designer series paper which is an eighth of an inch smaller three and seven eighths by five and an eighth and we are going to put that right on this black layer okay so far so good right then we're going to take this um, foil, black foil paper, and we're going to put this right in the middle of our card. And this piece was three and seven eighths by one and a half. Our designer series paper is one and a quarter by three and seven eighths. And I know it's probably hard to see in the camera. You can't see what I'm doing? I'm in the camera now. I think maybe that's delayed a little bit, isn't it? Okay, so, um, but this foil paper is just gorgeous. It's stunning on your cards. And you might even have missed it in the holiday mini catalog, but I love, love, love it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my starburst punch and we are going to punch out a starburst circle. And then we are going to do, let's see, I'm going to punch out my circle of white, two inch circle of white first. Usually I would stamp this first, but I need things to be kind of in a small area and it might be easier for me to do it this way. So I'm going to use Memento ink with my cat. We're going to do the cat. Well, let's do the trick or treat first. Hang on, I got to grab that out of the basket. I just took off my desk. Here it is. Trick or treat. Yep. That's the greeting that I wanted for this card. So I'm using Memento ink and I'm going to do a little trick or treat right here. And I think I'm still on my screen, right you guys? Yep. Okay. Good deal. Yes, it does, Denise. Denise says it reminds me of patent leather shoes my kids had in the 80s. I completely agree with you. And then we're going to put our little cat right over here. And again, this is a very delicate stamp, so you don't want to push it down real hard. You're going to get a much nicer image if you don't squish the rubber. I know that's hard to remember to do. Believe me, I do it enough myself. And then we're going to do our little frog. And he is so stinking cute. And again, all of these are memento ink. <gasps> There's our frog. Okay. I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Blends. So what do I have here for Stampin' Blends? I have um, Old Olive Light and my Dark Smoky Slate. Those are the two that I'm going to use here. And I'm going to put my cheater glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Shh, I didn't even need to really tell you that, guys that, but I mean, let's be real here, right? <laughs> And I'm just going to color in my cat. And I tell you, the more I use these Stampin' Blends, the more I am falling in love with them. Not that I didn't love them to begin with, but they're just so much nicer than scribbly marker lines. And that's always been a huge issue for me. I do not like scribbly marker lines at all. So there we go. And then I'm gonna use the smaller end to do the tail. This is a lot of pressure. Just Color this tail like you guys are watching me. Perfect! Yay! And then I'm going to come in and color my little frog. Now I want to make sure that I'm leaving his eyes uncolored because I want them to be white and pop. And there's our cutie patootie little frog. I didn't color the ears on the cat. You're not even going to see them when we're done here, so you don't need to worry about it. And then, let's see, I brought in, um, I, oh, here's my aqua painter that I had in my, in my bin because I just wanted a little bit of ground. And I always kind of get my aqua painter started on my hand so I know what's going on. That's where this basic gray is coming in. I squished some ink into the lid and I just want a little bit of ground under my little animals and that's all I did. Can you guys see that okay? It's just a super, super easy way to um, 
put some ground in there. <laughs> Mickey says she takes her glasses off for close work. Well, yeah. <laughs> Good for you, Mickey. Um, I have to put on these magnifying things that make me look like who knows who Mr. Magoo is. <laughs> yeah. All right, enough about that. Is it time for a drink? I think it is. I'm getting a little parched. Okay, so now I'm going to take my cat and my little frog dude, and we are going to do a little bit of assembly on this card. I'm gonna put my layer on the front here. I just love these colors together. And this cat paper is super kind of funny, I think. Okay, where did my ribbon go? Right here, here comes my ribbon. Now this one I just wrapped all the way around here and tied it in a knot right here. Oops. And you always wish they had somebody here with their finger, right, to help you, but I don't want anybody in my office. We want to keep Steve out there because he'll come in here and that man, he doesn't have much of a filter and I'm afraid. <laughs> I hope he's not still listening. <laughs> I do not want him to say something that is not appropriate. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure he's tuned out already. He usually listens for a little while and then he sh shuts it off. He's watching golf, probably. He went on this golf tournament and um, I can't remember. They did 81 holes of golf um, from Wednesday through yesterday. <laughs> And you guys know that his body is kind of deteriorating. That's why he retired early. But he was like a hurting unit when he came home. He said 81 rounds of golf, but good for him. He deserves it. He worked hard all his life. Okay, you guys, so this is super cute already, right? But we're going to do something to it. Where's my inside? Didn't I do an inside? Oh, yeah, I got that done. I'll show you that in a minute. So now we're going to work with shrink plastic. And let me talk to you a little bit about that. Um, let's see. What did I do? Oh, I didn't use my bat punch for that. I mean, I certainly could have, but I didn't. So let me put these out of the way here so I can make some room. So, um, shrink plastic. I'll show you my, what I bought. And you can find this any place. You can find this at your big box craft stores. I actually ordered mine off Amazon. But it's just shrinky dinks. Do you remember shrinky dinks? They're amazing. And I used um, colored pencils on mine. So you have to stamp with stays on ink. I'm gonna take my witch's hat and I am going to stamp the hat. Now you wanna be careful not to let that slide, right? I'm gonna close this up. I'm letting that dry just a little bit. I can clean up my mess here and get all this stuff out of the way. You do need just a little bit of drying time on it. So hang on while I throw all this stuff in my bin so that my desk isn't such a disaster. You guys know that I like things tidy now that I've gotten all organized. <laughs> okay, what did, okay, I'm getting off camera again. Okay, thank you. Denise had a great idea. What was Denise's great idea? Mickey says her sister is a shrinky dink nut. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use orange and yellow and black. And these are our wonderful watercolor pencils. The borders on the top and bottom, were they always there? I'm not sure what you mean, Lori. What does that mean? So I'm, I'm looking at my screen. And um, it's just that my camera's a little bit further away from me now, so it's gonna take a little period of adjustment. All right, I am going to color with my colored pencils. We've got yellow stars here. And then I'm gonna come in with some black. And these colored pencils are perfect for this. And again, this is plastic. I mean, it feels like plastic, but it will take the colored pencils. You can also do this with like um, permanent markers, like Sharpie markers. Those work. 
You cannot do it with Stampin' Blends, and I know that because I tried, and here's the deal. You have to use Memento ink to stamp with Stampin' Blends, and Memento ink will not dry on this plastic. You have to use stays on, and when you try to color um, with a, an alcohol marker on stays on, it just removes the ink, like it makes it disappear, so. So then I'm just coloring in between all these cute little stars. And it doesn't look, it doesn't look that great, but wait, just wait. So this is a soup, you could die cut this with the die that comes in this bundle. Just for these purposes, I am going to quickly cut it out because it's super easy. I, you know what I think I'm gonna do, you guys? I think next time I'm gonna put something on my desk that tells me where, um, I'll tape something down here that tells me where I need to stay up here. I think that's a good idea so that I don't get off camera because I do that when I'm filming regular videos too and then I get done with the video and I'm like, oh my gosh. Could you tell it makes me a little crazy? <laughs> I don't need any help in that department. All right, so I'm just cutting this out with my um, snips. Whoops. And it cuts out really easy. It's very thin plastic. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here comes the fun part. This is like the magic part. Now, this is going to get a little loud because it is um, shrink plastic. Um, I mean, a heat tool on shrink plastic. So I'm going to hold my hat down here. I've got my heat set to the highest temperature. There's a low and a high on these um, Stampin' Up! heat tools. Now you can bake Shrinky Dinks in the oven, but I don't want to go turn my oven on. It's hot and it's in the other room. And look at, can you see what's happening? Keep your heat tool on it. Keep heating it, keep heating it. and it'll lay right back down. Look at how tiny it is. Okay, now this, oh, that's a little hot, <laughs> which I knew it was gonna be, so why I picked it up like that, but it cools off super fast and then it gets hard. And it's already cool enough for me to hold it. But isn't that just the cutest little thing? It did look like I was shrinking the Wizard of Oz, didn't it, Denise? And what did I do with my little hat? I took a mini glue dot and added it to my hat. And then I put it right on my little cat. And how cute is that, you guys? Yeah. I think you're going to be seeing some more shrink plastic stuff from me. I can't wait to get um, into the holiday, like the Christmas holidays with a little bit of shrink plastic. I think we'll be doing this again. Now, I've got one more thing for the inside of my card. I took and stamped that cute little broom and I colored that in with my um, Stampin' Blends, the Cat 2, and stamped the Happy Halloween. And I'm just going to add that to the inside of my card because the front is so stinking cute that I want something really cute on the inside too and I thought this was isn't it sweet? Okay, what time is it? 8.14. Oh my gosh, I am right on time. I'm rocking this tonight. What do you guys think? Here we go. Let me clean up some of this mess. Here's the cards that we made tonight. Again, this was designed by Sarah Simon. She is on my team. And then I have this cute little um, chubby ghost card. Sarah's Falling for Leaves bundle card and a shrink plastic Halloween card with that cauldron bubble again. There we go. Did I miss any questions here, you guys? Don't forget to share my video. I really do appreciate that, and that helps me out. You can't even know how much that helps me out. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, remember, sharing is caring. <laughs> I love saying that. Don't forget you have three ways to win, leaving a comment. So if you popped on here and you're watching but you didn't leave a comment yet, please comment something. 
You can type cute or you can type where you're from. I want you to type something so that you get entered in a drawing to win prizes for the comments. You also share my video, you're entered in another drawing for that. And all online orders, when you use this host code, that is going to give you special perks from me and that will enter you in a drawing also. So three ways to win from me. And I'm just checking here to see, did I miss any comments? Did I miss any questions? I try to go back through all the comments, you guys, and um, answer anything that I might have missed. The leaf card was your favorite. Yeah, what was your favorite? Which is your favorite tonight? Which one has your head swimming with fantastic ideas? That's a better question, I think. Thanks, Janet. My Aunt Janet is on there. I was talking about Pete earlier being the fabulous pheasant hunter that gives me the pheasant feathers. Yay! <laughs> my, that's my uncle. That was my aunt that was on here. She is also a card maker. The cat card is Jean's favorite. Nancy loves the last one. Anne Marie likes the cat card. Denise can't, she can't pick a favorite. Janet likes the third one. The leaf card is Ella's favorite. Okay, Carrie likes the ghost. Lisa likes the cat card too. You guys are so cute. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody has any other questions, you guys know you can always message me. Um, please make sure you're checking out my blog. I post on there five days a week most of the time. I have a <clears throat> blog hop coming up on the evening of the 19th with the control freaks. That's always fun is happening this week. I don't know where my folder went that has my schedule in it. I better find that. Um, I'm hoping to go back up to northern Wisconsin um, kind of in the middle of the week this week to go bear hunting again. Nobody can go with me. My daughter has to do a school function. They have a brat fry. By the way, you guys, Haley has a brat fry at Festival Foods on Saturday. They're raising money for a field trip. So if you guys happen to be around Festival Foods in Menasha, go check out Haley's classes selling brats. So she can't go bear hunting with me this weekend. And um, my mom has her class reunion, so she can't go bear hunting with me. So I'm going to go up. I'm probably going to go up like Wednesday or Thursday. I can go early because then I'll have to wait for Haley to get done with work and whatever. So I think I'm probably going to do that if I can get enough things done so that I have stuff to share with you guys for next Sunday. I will be live again on September 23rd, um, Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. And if you guys have any questions in the meantime, um, just pop them my way. Kathy, Kathy says she looks forward to Sunday nights. I've heard that from a lot of people. And thank you very much. That is so sweet. I am glad that I can fill your Sunday nights with a little bit of fun. And uh, it makes me happy, too. All right, you guys. I think I'm going to sign off. Gilmore was an hour late. And um, Gilmore, I'm going to post this to my page. This always gets posted so you can go back and watch it. Oh, Janet's pastor loves to go bear hunting. Janet, where does he go bear hunting at? That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, okay. I think we're done. I think we did it. Woohoo! I will see you guys back here on the 23rd, 7 p.m. Um, we'll probably be doing some more fall cards. I might get a Christmas card or two in there. You know, I know it's really early, but you got to kind of start thinking about Christmas, right? Okay, you guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye.